Hey guys, welcome back to the farm. This is Lisa and you're watching Yogi Hollow Farm. And if you're new here, welcome. And if you're coming back again, thanks. We appreciate you. Love having everybody come by. So today we're doing our first of two videos for uh, Janet at Homestead Where You Are's collaboration, Feast in a Jar 23. And so there's a lot of people participating, videos every day, giveaway on May 6th. So make sure you're liking, subscribing, and leaving meaningful comments on each of the videos. If you cut and paste comments, they're gonna be deleted by YouTube. Make sure you check out all the other collaborators. The description box is down below, and I will have all that information for you. Meals in a Jar is something that I feel pretty passionate about. And why do I feel passionate about it? Well, first of all, there's many reasons to stock your pantry, right? Number one, the state of the world. Enough said, we're not even going there. The other thing is you might live in a rural neighborhood like we do, um, so it's easy to have things on hand. Um, all the obvious reasons, right? Let's look at some of the not so obvious reasons. And what do I mean by that? Well, this week I hurt myself and it's not something I planned on, but I'm glad I had meals in a jar because all I had to do is pull things out of my pantry, add water, and we had some good home cooked meals. That's what it's all about. And they were good, they were hot, and they really served a purpose. And with limited mobility, I was able to get food on the table. Come on along, we're gonna make a Sloppy Joe freeze dried meal in a jar, just add water when it's to reconstitute it so we can eat it. And it's a copycat of a very popular Sloppy Joe sauce in a can, and y'all know what I'm talking about, it begins with an M. So come on along. All right, let's look at the ingredients. So you'll need a can, an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. I only have a 15 ounce, so I will use what I need and freeze the rest. You need a cup of ketchup, a tablespoon of onion flakes, a tablespoon of green peppers finely chopped, a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of minced garlic. However, all I have is garlic powder, so I'm gonna use that. A quarter of a teaspoon of celery seed, a half a teaspoon of chili powder, and a teaspoon of mustard, ground mustard that is, and then one pound of ground beef. I have that defrosting, and so what you're gonna do first is you're gonna brown the ground beef. I'm not gonna take you along for that because you all know how to do that. So I'll bring you back when it's browned. So there's the one pound of ground beef that is now nicely browned and drained. And it says to you add all of the ingredients on top of the beef and mix it in. I'm gonna mix it in a bowl so I can mix it really good and then pour it in. So I'm gonna just put all those ingredients that I mentioned earlier in the bowl. So I'm gonna start with the ketchup and then I'll measure out the tomato sauce to eight ounces like we said. And I'm gonna add the peppers, which are already measured. And then there's the mustard. So now we're gonna mix it up completely. And I'm gonna pour it over the beef. We're gonna mix this all in so it's incorporated. We're gonna simmer this for about 10 minutes. And in 10 minutes, here's the thing, it'll be ready to go, or you can take it to the next level, and that's what we're gonna do here. So in 10 minutes, you can freeze it, you can 
can it if you follow canning guidelines. You can dehydrate it if you follow dehydrating guidelines. I'm gonna freeze dry it. But the possibilities are endless. So I have my freeze dryer ready to go and I am gonna finish cooking this for 10 minutes and then I'm gonna pop it in the freeze dryer. Now that it's cooked and cooled some, I'm gonna spread it out. Now, normally I would freeze this overnight, but I don't have the time, so I'm gonna just spread this out. Now, and also normally you could easily fill these trays more. But again, this is just demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna keep my trays pretty empty so that the freezing and drying time is pretty quick. I'm gonna make sure they're fairly even and fairly level. So each one has about the same, close enough. And like I always say, you always wanna try a recipe before you do a whole pantry full of them. All right, we're gonna get these loaded in the freeze dryer. I have my drain valve closed, my door is closed. And we'll bring you back when they're done. All right, so it is done freeze drying. I've opened my valve and I'm gonna open it up and take a look, make sure everything is dry. So I will bring you back in the kitchen. So here is the consistency of it. I don't know if you can see that. just crumbles. So what I'm gonna do is just break it up in pieces and throw it in my jar and I've got my canning funnel up there. I'm not gonna try to break it into tiny little pieces or anything like that. Keep it real simple just so it all goes in the jar. That's where these silicone mats come in really handy because you scoop them up And there you go. And basically the amount that I made, I would say I would want in one jar. So I might have to break this up more and I'll show you a little trick for that. So here's my trick for um, breaking it up a little into chunks just to make it easy to fit in the jar is one of these uh, things you use for fermenting. Now, if you were putting this in the pantry for long-term storage, not like here where I'm just making it to show you, you would put the appropriate size oxygen absorber in for a one quart jar or whatever jars you're using. And then you would vac seal the jar. I could have smashed it down further if I was putting it in the pantry, but I'm not. So, like I said, you would have an oxygen absorber in there, you would leave a little bit of a headspace, you would seal it up, and you would back seal your jar. And then I store them without the rings on. And then I label it. So there is your Sloppy Joe copycat of a popular uh, Sloppy Joe sauce that comes in a can, and that's what it would look like. So when you go to cook it, I have a small saucepan of water that I'm gonna boil and I'm gonna make it real easy and I'm just gonna put the dry stuff right in the pan. So you would literally just grab this right out of your pantry and be good to go. All right, so my water is close to a boil and I'm gonna just slowly add. You don't wanna to add too much water. This is not dehydrated food and it will be soupy. So I'm adding very slowly and giving it a chance to soak. And I'm gonna give it a mix. And you can see it's coming right back to that saucy consistency like we never even freeze dried it. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. 
And then I'm gonna let this sit and I'll leave that extra water there in case I need it. But I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes and then I'm just gonna make sure it's heated through in the pan because I wanna make sure it's hot. And then we'll give it a good old taste test. And the good news is, is what I did was I had my husband taste it before I freeze dried it. And then um, I'm gonna have him taste it again after now that it's reconstituted and he can tell you, uh, you know, what he thinks about the freeze drying process. So there you go, it looks just like Sloppy Joe's. So it's sat about 10 minutes. I think the consistency is good. And just making sure it's hot enough. I did not add any more water. Oh, it smells so good. I'm gonna get it plated up and we'll give it a taste. So there you have it. That's what it looks like. Oh, it's so good. Super quick and easy to pull right out of the pantry. Tastes about the same. Um as it would before it was freeze dried as it does now it tastes pretty good and it's definitely a sloppy joe mm -hmm. does it taste like that popular uh canned stuff because that was a copycat recipe yeah it tastes pretty close yeah it's pretty good keeper mm -hmm. all right guys well there you have it i'll have the recipe in the description box down below but I did want to end this with one little tip. I would suggest not putting the teaspoon of salt that it called for in there. And the reason why was as we were eating our lunch, I, I am not a fan of salty food. Ryan will add salt to his food a lot more than I would. However, we both felt it was a little salty. So I would adjust the salt or omit it completely and add it afterwards. So. That's my tip for you, but thanks for watching everybody. Make sure you check out all the other videos in the collab. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a great comment down below. Have a great day. Take care.